I stand before you today to address this question. How would Dr. King assess our progress in achieving his vision of America? I would like to start off by acknowledging that this is not a simple question. I asked for my dad's opinion and he said, that is not an easy question and it's often debated on college campuses. So what was Dr. King's vision for America? I've been taught that Dr. King wanted peace, nonviolence, and equal rights for all. He wanted people to be treated by the content of their character, and not their skin color. Also, I come to learn that Dr. King was an advocate for economic justice and the rights of such fortunate communities. Dr. King died on April 4th, 1968, and since that time, there have been many events that have shaped the progress towards Dr. King's vision for America. Dr. King would be proud of the progress made by the civil rights movement, changing how black citizens were treated in America by outlawing legal segregation and outlawing many of the racist laws, such as the Jim Crow law, which was used to marginalize black people, keep them separate from white people. Which was used to marginalize black people, keep them separate from white, from white people. However, there are still parts of America that don't believe in equal rights under the law. In 2017, at a rally in Charlottesville, Virginia, white supremacist groups clashed with counter protesters, leading to the unfortunate death of Heather Hare and injuring many others. Dr. King would be proud of the Dr. King would be proud of the progress made towards nonviolence and equal rights, but saddened by the setbacks along the way. Dr. King believed people should be treated by the content of their character and not their skin color. For example, the election of the first black president, Barack Obama, voters judged him on the content of his character and not his skin color. People voted for him because of his campaign and saw him as a leader. Now compare this to the story of Trayvon Martin and how he was treated unfairly based on the color of his skin. His story also sparked the Black Lives Matter movement. Ten years ago, a 17-year-old black male named Trayvon Martin was walking home when George Zimmerman killed him because he looked suspicious. This led to three women named Alicia Garza, Patrice Coolers, and Opal Tomet starting the Black Lives Matter movement. Dr. King would be proud that America elected, elected its first black president and proud of the woman that started the Black Lives Matter movement. Now onto Dr. King's vision for economic justice. He once said, there is nothing new about poverty. What is new, however, is that we have the resources to get rid of it. This quote comes from Dr. King's 1964 Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech. Towards the end of his time, Dr. King focused more on economic rights for the less fortunate. Statistics say that in 2019, only 42.1% of African Americans owned homes, the lowest home ownership rate compared to other racial groups in America. This percentage has not really changed from the 1960s, when only 38.4% of African Americans owned homes. There is still a lot of work to be done to reach Dr. King's goal for economic justice. Sometimes we need a reminder about Dr. King's vision for America. I believe he will remind us we all must keep working together to make America a peaceful and nonviolent place where everybody is treated equally and no one is stereotyped based on the color of their skin. And he would be proud of, of how far America has come from African Americans not being able to vote to a black president and everybody coming together, not a race, background, or religion, to prove that black lives matter. However, I know there is still work we must do to reach Dr. King's vision for America. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak in front of you today. I hope you have a great rest of your day.